ever wondered if you could be able to write your own music or about how you could learn uh, composition. Why do some people seem to compose music so easily and some will never attempt to do it? In this video, I'll walk you through some strategies I use with my own students and I will show you how you too can start composing music from scratch or almost from scratch. In the past, almost anybody who would learn how to play an instrument or sing was also composing music. With the advent of publishing companies, many musicians and music students have lost this ability. They have lost the art of creating or of improvising music. We have simply stopped teaching and learning these skills over time because we find them more comfortable to rely on written music. My name is Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. <laughs> And yet, uh, a type of educational thought that starts from the students, from music, uh, and from uh, the students' wants and needs would uh, necessarily imply that we go back to compose our own music and to improvise our own music. I assume you know this piece? Yes, monsieur. Well, I hope this won't be embarrassing for you. From the Allegro. Mm. But how can we go back to that? Let's take a broader view of the creative process from a cognitive perspective. Studies have shown that various brain regions are involved at the different stages of the creative process. When a musician or any creative individual embarks on the journey of creation, they traverse a series of cognitive stages that culminate in the birth of artistic expression. The first stage of this process is preparation. At this stage, the creative mind gathers knowledge, experience, and stimuli. If we would compare the creative process of composing music with the process we use to cook meals, we can imagine that this first stage can be compared to grocery shopping. You grab ingredients from the shelves uh, at the grocery store, but you will not necessarily use everything for every meal. Next comes the incubation stage, where the mind goes into a state of rest and relaxation. During this phase, the cognitive processes of memory and pattern recognition work behind the scene, connecting seemingly unrelated concepts and forming new associations. Everything is now in your kitchen and you start thinking about what to cook for dinner. Let's imagine now that you see two ingredients and decide to taste them together. In the illumination stage, there is a moment of insight, the haha moment, where the ideas come together and take shape. This is the realm of mental simulation and imagery, where the mind experiments with various possibilities and scenarios. Finally, in the verification stage, we validate and refine the creative output. students have their own notebook. Like younger Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, they learn to write their own little pieces since the very beginning. Let's explore four practical composition exercises that empower my own students to embark on their own creative journey. In my teaching approach, I introduce my students to composition through musical storytelling. I ask students to write or draw a short story and then to connect the different parts of their story to some sounds. Another of my favorite exercises is the theme and variation. The students are given a simple melodic theme 
and then they are encouraged to create variations by altering the rhythm, harmony, and dynamics. This exercise not only enhances the melodic development, but also fosters their ability to manipulate music in a creative way. Collaborative composition projects are also immensely valuable. Working in groups or with parents, siblings, friends, students combine their diverse musical influences and ideas to create a cohesive piece. To further challenge their creativity, I introduce constraint-based composing. By limiting the use of certain pitches, the use of specific rhythmic patterns or harmonic progressions, students must explore innovative solutions within these boundaries, leading to unexpected musical outcomes. Throughout these exercises, my students not only refine their musical skills, but also build self-confidence in their creative abilities. As an educator, I understand the importance of providing constructive feedback to my students, and so I encourage them to reflect on their creative process, identifying areas of improvement, and celebrating their successes. This reflective practice nurtures their creative awareness, enabling them to refine and grow as musicians. Moreover, I believe that improvisation and composition go hand in hand. And so I encourage students to engage uh, in improvisations uh, uh, not only to develop their own musical intuition, but also to inspire fresh ideas uh, for their compositions. I hope this video will help you get started in creating your own music and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching. Bye. To my cadenza. Who the f is that?